Hello everyone, welcome to Let's Talk Motorsport, a show where a couple of blokes have fun chatting all things motor racing. My name is Daniel and uh, this is Ivan. Unfortunately, Alex couldn't be here, um, but uh, hopefully he's here next week. But uh, Ivan, how are you, mate? I'm good. I'm good. There's plenty, plenty of motorsport action to, to talk about. Uh, lots of rumours, gossips and uh, uh, musical chairs of Formula oh. One and MotoGP are t- starting to take place. Uh, we're in for a treat tonight. Absolutely. And uh, let's start off with the only motorsport event that pretty much took place around yes. the world is MotoGP. They're back after the four-week break. Um, the British Grand Prix, the 75th celebration, the retro round. Uh, what did you think of the weekend? Uh, look, I think it was really great, you know, starting from Thursday, you know, when they all the teams, you know, showed off their colours and um, there were some crackers out there, you know, the Aprilia with the Max Biaggi. Um, the Yamaha paying tribute and, you know, the Grassini team. And there was just so many, like, it was weird on Sunday to looking at them with the first first laps mm. um, to see them out there. But um, 75 years, what a milestone. Oh, it's fantastic. And, yeah, that caught me off guard when they had the sprint race where it's just the normal cars, yeah. the normal bikes. And then um, on Sunday, they all looked completely different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, like, um, like a Jorge Martin was in second or third. I'm like, hang on, is that him? Or wait, yeah. Is that the one behind. But um, They all looked the same. I was so confused who was yes. leading. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. But overall, um, yeah, a brilliant uh, weekend of racing. Uh, um, in the Moto Two, the home, the home uh, favorite, uh, you know, uh, Jake Dixon, you know, taking out the win is fantastic, you know, for a, for a home crowd. But what do you think of it? I thought it was brilliant. Um, it wasn't as exciting as we have seen throughout the years. Yes. But um, we did get some good action, especially towards the end of the Grand Prix when it sort of came to life. Yeah. Um, so let's start off with uh, the big talking point. Jorge Martin is now the championship leader once again. Yes, yes. Um, you know, um, he went to, to the summer break, you know, feeling miserable, mm. 10 points behind uh, Peko after his own mistake. And then uh, Peko made a mistake of his own, you know, exactly. in, in, in the sprint, you know, crashing out once again and, and in the race, not really having the pace of Jorge and Enya, which we will, you know, obviously talk about Enya a little bit more in depth today. Mm. Um, his pace was absolutely brilliant, but an underwhelming Grand Prix for the world champion, mm. you know, losing 13 points in one round to Jorge and really not having anything, you know, for the two guys at the front. It was uh, weird. I was really shocked with his performance this this weekend compared to how he's been all year. Yes. Um, it was really uh, weird to see him. He's normally three seconds down the road. He was three seconds down the other way. Yeah. Um, so that was a bit bizarre. But, uh, yeah, like you said, he crashed out in the sprint race. Definitely not what he wanted. That's where he lost the championship lead pretty much um, or put him into the position where he could lose it. Uh, Mark Marquez, his future teammate, also uh, had a crash as well in the sprint. Well, I'll follow you, you know, like I'm following you into the factory team. If you crash, I crash. If you That's go it. out for qualifying, I go out for qualifying, which actually brings me to a very interesting point. Even before the racing took mm. place, there was a lot of controversy once again about riders waiting for a tow. You know, Peko was quite vocal mm. saying it's ridiculous. You know, we're the world's best. We don't need to wait for somebody, you know, to do a lap. A bit of politics already, and uh, they haven't even started being teammates. That's it. So uh, it's going to be interesting next year for Definitely. sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, weekend to re- remember for Martin, but uh, especially Bastianini, the beast. The beast. Uh, what a performance. He pushed like a... Uh, we won't say that, the final word because it's, no. it's, 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 it's his trademark, you know. He goes, uh, he goes uh, I pushed like a... And anyway, yeah. so it's a very, very fascinating weekend. It's also fascinating that the guys who finished first and second in both races are also the two guys that are leaving Ducati. Yeah. And the youngest ones as well. So can you imagine if we end up in Valencia with, say, Enya and Jorge fighting for the title, they both come first or second in the championship and they're both leaving Ducati? Like, Ducati is probably like, what are we thinking here? What's going on? It's unbelievable. <laughs> because you know? now we've got a four-way or th- a three-way title fight now with uh, Bastianini only, I think, 40, not one, 49 points he, away. He, he is 49 points behind. Look, I still have a question mark over his consistency, mm. um, his qualifying consistency. I mean, Silverstone dominated, you know, like uh, he had the pace. He was the fastest rider in both races. Beautiful time management, as always. Mm. But can he be there right up until the end of this championship? I don't know. It's going to be tricky. Although the 
two leaders don't have to cr have to stop crashing if they um, uh. if they want to keep him away. But uh, now he's undoubtedly he was the fastest one there, the most consistent, the yes. most um, the best at saving tires. Um, the, he had an incredible pace even in the end of the race. He still had that pace holding on. Yeah, I mean, look, um, he had a little bit of a gap to Jorge because you know, to, going past your teammate, you got to be a little bit careful. You can't exactly, you know, mm. just you know, put it up the inside and cause a crash for both both riders, especially when your teammate's leading the, the world championship at that point. But very, very fascinating. You know, he had a, like a one point one second gap. He bridged that gap to Jorge, and Jorge was pushing like Jorge was pushing, oh, like, absolutely, like like an animal, mm. and still managed to get him and get in front of him. Like a superb performance, and kind of what we expected from him last year. Mm. In, in the factory team, but it's now coming out in year two, but too late because That's it's it. KTM. Unfortunately, it is a little too too late for that. But KTM, you know, they they were nowhere. Oh, absolutely! Like um, Brad Binder. Um, what happened there? Like, you just, I don't know. At the start, he just decided I'm out of here. Yeah, he just didn't get going. Everyone took off except him. He had some um, kind of technical glitch because mm. he had no power. Like, he just he put his hand up and but yeah. but even Pedro Costa, I uh, think. Finish seven for eight. Yeah, he, he was nowhere near the top five. But the pace, um, the, the pace of the, the GP24s at the moment is, you know, three GP24s in the a top three in the championship. And it's, it's just a phenomenal bike. Mm, absolutely. And in saying that, Jack Miller finally finished ahead of Brad Binder for once. So that's a good thing. Yeah, that is a good <laughs> thing. And uh, there are rumors of him going to super bikes. Mm. Uh, but there's also um, Jack was actually talking about not having a single contract offer. At the moment, mm. so what happened? You know, it's it's very very sad because he is a, he is a talented rider, but you're only as good as your performances. Yeah, and at the moment he's not performing. No, and he was saying because to be honest, I'm going to sound a bit harsh here when he said when the uh, the uh, news thing kept saying um, he hasn't received any calls from anyone, and I'm like, Why well, you? perform better, and then you might. He simply he that bike is more capable than where it's at. Yes. Um, and he's not, he, he doesn't deserve it, in my opinion, unfortunately, after this year. Um, the rookie. Exactly. The rookie. You know, the rookie is showing both him and Raul. Mm. You know, Raul is out of MotoGP. Jack, 99% that he's out. So, mm. you know, Ayagura potentially going to, but we'll talk about that in a, in a little while. But overall, fantastic to have MotoGP back. And, uh, you know, now we move on to the next round, uh, another, you know, thrilling uh grand prix coming up mm, and the red bull ring, the red bull ring is mm. you know but they, they modify it for for motor gp you know they've put that yeah, extra chicane. Chicane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's always a blast yeah um, so very very fascinating but overall yeah brilliant uh br brilliant grand prix uh marquez underwhelming you know in this race um finished fourth but you know it's not where we expect no, him to be definitely not absolutely but uh do you want to run through the top 10 of the race yeah absolutely we can definitely run through uh the top 10 so um at the front uh we had uh no that's is that the world championship or? that is indeed the world championship that is the world championship that's it. <laughs> yeah, never mind well <laughs> i was like that definitely there, we go. there, there we, go. we go so we had Enya bashanini jorge martin francesco bagnaia mark marquez fabio di Antonio. Great race, by the way, with the Rossi livery. He did a oh. he did a very. What do you very think great. of that livery? It was cool. Yeah, it was cool. There were heaps of others that he had over the years that they could have chosen, but the dark blue with fluoro. It's iconic, spectacular, iconic. Um, Alicia Spargaro six in the main race again. I think he expected more out of that, especially, especially when he got a pole. He got mm. pole and he got third in the um in, in the sprint mm. as well. So Alex Marquez seven for uh, Bedecki. Considering the crash that happened in the sprint, well done, top mm. eight. Pedro Costa, 16 seconds off and the first of the KTM. So that Definitely is... Definitely not where we expect. No, 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 no. Frankie Morbidelli, double long lap mm. and still finish 10th. That's all right. That's not bad. <laughs> I mean, that's pretty cool. Um, you know, someone that we almost have forgotten about is, you know, Quattararo, poor guy, mm. um, 24 seconds off. Uh, Jack Miller, 12 in the points. Uh, Maverick, uh, where was Maverick this weekend? No idea. No idea. No idea. No, he's still on holiday. He's probably uh, still racing. Who knows? <laughs> uh, um, uh, Darko, Nakagami, um, yeah, Augusto Fernandez, Marini in 17th, and Remy Gardner, 
running off the you know the, the, the finishes mm. um and then you know we had you know um juan mia Oliveira, binda and fernandez that unfortunately didn't finish and actually Oliveira and fernandez took each other out yeah oh that's not what you want to do that is definitely not what you want to do but <laughs> definitely not fantastic uh grand prix and uh yeah can't wait for rebel but um before we end up finishing up the motor gp segment who what what was your best livery of the weekend um if you have one uh the best livery of the weekend uh look it's hard to look it's hard to go by past the, the ducati factory iconic uh that that iconic mm. livery there i mean it definitely brought back memories but uh i i would say i would say hrc actually did a really yeah. good job with theirs like uh I liked it. Yeah, I was going to go with um, Ducati. <laughs> you were going to go with Ducati. <laughs> but there yeah. you go. There but you go. Uh, no, it was cool how they did the uh, the retro sort of thing. It was really cool with the new intro as well. How they did it. Yes, that was cool. Everything, um, everything. Um, I feel like other sports should have it. Like Formula One definitely should have it. Uh, yes, supercars they used to have it. Sand down, they should bring it back. Um, it's just it's a good way to celebrate the history of the sport. I, I agree. I agree. I think it's a uh, yeah, fantastic way to pay, pay tribute. Um, so many memories, uh, so many Grand Prix, and yeah, I actually, you know what? The Aprilia with Max Biaggio livery. I changed my yeah. mind. The Aprilia. Oh, there we go. <laughs> There's too many good ones. There's too many. But uh, yeah, now the KTM even wasn't too bad either. True. I didn't mind that. True. It reminded me a bit too much of the V-carb from Formula One, and that's exactly how it looked. And it's exactly how it performed. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs>